So good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on the uh, user program proposal submission uh, from Pittsdain to Alps. For those of you that do not know me, I am Maregazza Giuffreda, and since quite some time, I am responsible for the um, user program at CSES. So what I'm going to do today is to present the submission of proposals and the, in this transition periods from Pittsdain to, uh, to Alps. This will not be a, a, re a purely technical proposal in the sense that I will not tell you which technical, uh, uh, how to write your technical report. I will give uh, some information, some uh, suggestions and recommendations, but this is not a technical uh, webinar in that sense. So I, uh, for those of you that have already participated to this kind of webinar, this is always the, the way I like to uh, start uh, the, uh, this, the, the webinar. As you all know, CSES now it's since a number of years uh, offering a world-class resources to uh, researchers. Machines and especially Pitts Dine, because he's also very uh, now we can say quite old, uh, is always oversubscribed. So there is competition for the resources. And in order to also uh, guarantee uh, the, um, the quality of the science that is done on these resources, we have to have a peer review process and we have to have a transparent uh, process that allows us to uh, um, allocate uh, resources. It's also a very important that the amount of resources granted is really strongly dependent on how good or the quality of your proposal. So access to the CSES infrastructure. See, you, I mean, if you are, uh, if you have applied at CSES uh, in the past, you know that we have two national calls per year, and now we, uh, since 2022, we have reactivated or re-enabled our Kronos Tier Zero call for proposals. And you also know that research infrastructure, CSES research infrastructure is open to uh, all researchers worldwide. Allocation schemes have not really changed. Since a number of years, there is a preparatory access, which we strongly recommend if you are new at CSES or if you have a new course and new applications that you want to test. Rather than wasting your uh, production resources if you have already access, or rather than coming up with a proposal that then will be rejected because you don't have the technical uh, report uh, properly done, we strongly recommend you to apply for preparatory project. And exceptionally, uh, uh, it, takes, uh, it, uh, it takes longer than a couple of days to go through the preparatory uh, application and approve them. Then we have the large production projects, so, uh, the production projects, sorry, that with the, the starting periods on April 1st and October 1st. Here, maybe not all of you, because it's written in our webpage, but I don't know if you ever had the chance to look at it. We do offer also a small allocation, but this small allocation is very uh, restrictive. So if you are interested, by all means apply, but read properly the, uh, the webpage where we explain where, um, uh, what are the, uh, the rules uh, to apply. And then we have this annual Kronos of call for proposal. Who can apply? This is also not changed. Uh, there's, uh, you need to hold at least a postdoc position within your institute when you submit your proposal, and you have to uh, uh, to. Uh, to have at least, I mean, a contract that is valid at least for the time of your uh, of your uh, allocation. What we also uh, have at CSES, we do not limit the number of proposals that one PI can submit 
at in one specific call. However, you need to be uh, to pay attention that if you submit more than one proposal, the scientific problem that you want to address has to be the problems that you want to address have to be different. So you cannot simply change the system, the molecules, or you have to have two different scientific problems that you want to address. And your technical description cannot simply uh, be a cut and paste from one proposal to the other, but has to be tailored for the, pro for the problem that you want to address in the proposal. So Kronos call for proposal. For those of you that know CSES, we used to be part of the phrase uh, research infrastructure. So in 2022, with Call24, Praise ceased to offer the uh, tier zero uh, uh, allocation in for Europe because of the uh, advent of the Euro HPC joint undertaking. And then because of the Switzerland political situation with uh, Europe, we are also no longer involved in many projects. And for that reason, we decided to re-enable our Kronos call for proposal. The Kronos call for proposal, uh, for, uh, it, Kronos stands for computationally intensive high impact research on novel outstanding science. And these are annual calls that can be uh, where you can apply for proposals that are for one year only. Exceptionally, we do accept two years, but no longer than that. Now, what is the, what are these Kronos proposals? What I really would like to stress also in the in the um, in the uh, thinking that we are going to have this Alps research infrastructure available pretty soon. These are scientific problems that they are supposed to be very challenging, very uh, demanding in terms of resources, and maybe also very innovative. So you have to think big. You need to have uh, to start thinking of uh, some scientific problems that you really would like to address, but it was not possible because of a limitation of uh, resource resources. So. Praise uh, Kronos, sorry, Kronos proposal can, must be ready on day one. So please do not submit a Kronos proposal where you need st still three months or six months to be ready to start. They can be risky. They should be risky because they should be something new, something uh, challenge, and they can also fail in the end. So you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't be afraid. This is part of the research. It's part of how science goes. You start with some ideas. You think they are great ideas. Maybe they are not so great in the end because there are some uh, un, uh, unexpected problems, or maybe something completely different comes out that will open up new uh, scenarios. So the Kronos requirement, that this is all standard, but I come soon uh, to uh, give you the new uh, information. Please remember to follow the requirements that we have put out there. Both uh, reviewers, uh, peer reviewers, and the panel are a bit, were a bit upset by the variety of way of writing these proposals. And this is why we had to become very strict in this. So Kronos proposal have to be 15 pages max, and you can only use Arial or Times New Roman. This is the size, the single spaces, and so on. But this is all available on our web page. You also have to submit your uh, everything in PDF. You will have a very short submission form, and then you have your project proposal, your CV, and do please, when you submit your publication list, do not submit 100 pages of publication list. We are only interested to your publication list of the last five, five or at most 10 years, not your entire uh, career. So the Kronos Tier Zero call for proposal this year, we have a first, very exceptionally, we will have two Kronos calls. So if, uh, thing, if, uh, if we didn't have this transition period, you would have just this call and that's it for this 2023. But actually we have opened two Kronos calls. The first one is deadline uh, 15th of May, 2023. So next month to start on October 1st. 
And the second one is 16th of October to start on April 1st, 2024. So why are we having two call for proposals? Well, in this first one on May 15, the only system available for Kronos is actually LUMIG, the Swiss share of LUMIG. LUMIG is now available, so there, are, there is the web page where you have all the technical information. I here summarize it, uh, the, the, the kind of node that I have. This is an AMD machine. Actually, sorry, I forgot in these slides to put the AMD, but this, uh, there is later on, I think. It's a GPU-based machine as well. So you have four GPU and 64 cores. And the currency is GPU hours. So you will not have pits dying for these Kronos calls. You can only apply for Lumigi. So if you are interested, uh, even though I hope this is not a surprise because it's written also on our web page, but if you are still interested in applying for a Kronos proposal, please remember that now LUMIG is available. So you need to have a, a, your technical data on LUMIG and you can get access on LUMIG. Just contact the SES, contact me or a project office, and we will open an account for you on on LUMIG so that you can do your preparatory uh, access. So for the second call for proposal, October 16, so I'm telling you now because it, there will the, there is some preparatory uh, work to be done from us, but also from your side. If you are interested in apply for the Kronos call with deadline on October 16th to start on April 1st, 2024, you will still have the Swiss share on LUMIG. But what is more important, you will have the Alps infrastructure available at CSES. I hope that is also not a novelty uh, for you to hear that Alps will be a uh, gray software. So Grace is the ARM processor and Hopper is the next generation NVIDIA GPUs. There have been a lot of uh, uh, articles going around also after Tom, our director, Thomas Schultz, giving a talk at the NVIDIA uh, DTC um, uh, conference. So you will have Alps to uh, run, uh, to apply as well. Now, I know that you might have questions, and please uh, just keep your questions uh, for the end of the, uh, of the presentation, because at the end, I will have time to answer uh, all your questions and to stay uh, longer if needed. Now, for what concerns the uh, national call for proposal, for, so the next call for proposal, again, requirements are unchanged, but again, please comply with what we are putting here. Maximum 10 pages has to be uh, Arial or Times Romans, the same as before. And this is all also, again, described in our web page. You need to submit the three, the three um, files, the project proposal, the CV, and your publication list of the last five years. Now, the deadlines for submission of proposal are the 15th of May. And this, that, this call for proposal, this is very important. This, is call, this call for proposal is a bit special because you will start on Pitts Dined, but you will be moved on in onto Alps. The second deadline is 16th of October, 2023, and that deadline will be up, it will be completely on the Alps infrastructure. There will be no longer pits dine available. I am not going to go through this. This is just to remind you that there are requirements, that there is the proposal description is well defined on our web page. But what I really want to recall your attention is on the following. Please do not forget to describe your scientific case on the proposal. Some, uh, some PIs are simply writing a proposal on technical description, and this is, not a this is not what we are asking you. 
Of course, we are more detailed in what we want to see as a technical requirements because this is the part that is evaluated or asse assessed by CSES. But you need to describe sufficiently your scientific case such that you can have a scientific assessment because otherwise you will fail because this is not really uh, understandable. But again, there is nothing changed there. This is exactly as it used to be uh, before. Now, the resources available, this is also important. The resources available for the next call, so is, uh, is pits diet hybrid, so nothing is changed, but one important thing that has changed, but just for this year, is that you will only be able to submit one year proposal and not uh, uh, more than that. So you will have only one year and then we will allow you to submit follow-up proposals. Technical data have to be on pits dined and uh, the um, allocation will start on pits dined in the last quarter of 2023, but it will be moved into Alps. Now, this is a bit, this is something that I hope users uh, or applicants will not be too upset because I is also described already on our web page, but for the next call for proposals, if you are submitting just for a purely multi-core allocations, you will no longer have pits dined available. You will have uh, you will, you can apply for one year proposal on the Swiss share of LumiC, which is an AMD uh, machine. To, uh, but and your technical data have to be provided on LumiC or alternative on our Iger on apps. By this, we are not saying that the multi-core allocation schemes will no longer be available, be available once we fully move on the HPC platform on Alps, but we are still, um, uh, we are still discussing internally how we will offer the uh, multi-core allocations on the Alps infrastructure. So the summary of the resources for the next call for proposals are the following. For the Swiss share on LumiC, we have 102 million core hours. The Swiss share on LumiG is 5 million GPU hours. We will have Pitstein the hybrid fully available for the allocation on October 1st, but the multi-core will not be uh, will no longer uh, be available. The HPC platform on Alps should be available starting on Q1 2024. Also, for the currency, I hope that this slide is not too confusing. Pitstein, nothing changed there since years. One node hours of Pitstein is 68 core equivalent, one GPU, 12 cores. One node of LumiG has a 64 uh, core AMD Trento plus four GPU as AMD, uh, MI250X. So the currency on the LumiG is one GPU hours. Just to give you an idea, one GPU hours of LumiG is around four node hours on Pitstein. On LumiC, you have a dual socket, so two AMD uh, um, uh, per node, 64 processors, core, uh, core per processor, sorry, 64 core per processor. So one node hour on LumiC will be 128 core hours. Now, the transition phase from Pits Dined to Alps. I hope that you have uh, grabbed or that I was clear enough that you uh, see that we will uh, the, the Alps uh, infrastructure is based is coming. Hopefully, if there are no other exciting uh, news uh, uh, from uh, Taiwan or whatnot, so we will have the Alps uh, infrastructure by the end of 2023 to start production 1st of April, 2024. So for this call of proposal, we cannot 
have a, a, um, a access to Alps. So this is why all your technical data has to be on the Pitsdine hybrid system. But what will happen is that CSES from now to the 1st of October, if possible, CSES will start benchmarking the supported applications on the Grace Opera. And if you have enough, if we have enough hardware, we will contact the uh, PIs of larger locations and ask for one or two persons to go on the on the pre alts the the the, uh, the TDS. Let's put it this way, even though it's not properly a TDS of the uh, um, uh, of the. Alp system, and we will ask them to actually uh, compile their application and run some benchmark. Nevertheless, your allocation will be granted on Pitsdine, and the, at the time the Scientific Advisory Committee meets in September, they, together with the, with the help of the, our technical uh, expert, SESES, they will make sure to give you the proper allocation on Pitsdine and then to transfer in a, in a clear and transparent uh, manner that allocation into Alps. Pitsdine is expected to be, this is important, uh, Pitsdine is expected to be available only until Q1 2024. Then all ongoing projects will go from, uh, will move from uh, Pitsdine to Alps. Also, you have to be uh, aware that the Overlapping phase between Pitsdine and Alps might be much shorter than what you have been used to. I remember when we were uh, running Monte Rosa and we had to go from Monte Rosa to Pitsdine, we had the two machines overlapping for, uh, for at least a quarter. This might not happen or will not happen actually for uh, this uh, uh, new infrastructure. Pitsdine and the Alps overlaps may be as short as a couple of weeks, but I expect no longer than a month. So please make sure that whatever you start on Dine can be continued on Alps. I know that there are certain disciplines that they have really uh, issues when going from one infrastructure to the other. So, but this will be unavoidable and there will be nothing we can really do to keep uh, Dined uh, up and running. So you have to think already now how to, you want to uh, proceed if you apply for uh, the next uh, call for proposal, which I still hope you will apply for the next call for proposal. But starting April 1st, 2024, the HPC uh, platform on Alps to serve the user program will be or should be fully in production. If you are interested in the uh, larger locations on the European systems, I want to stress out here that Switzerland was part of Horizon 2020. So we were a legitimate partner of Horizon 2020. So Swiss researchers are eligible to apply for the EuroHPC joint undertaking call for proposal for extreme scale access. So the next deadlines are the 28th of April and 28th of September. The, uh, the, currently, the resources available are just Leonardo Booster at Cineca in Italy and Lumi, G, and Lumi at, um, in Finland. Should be, it's possible that by October 1st, you will have also Mare Nostrum 5 in Barcelona available in the pool. The only thing that you have to be aware, but this is not to discourage you, it's just to, to be clear, is that CSES has not saying in this call for proposals. We are not involved. The reviewing process is completely uh, uh, controlled by the EuroHPC joint undertaking, and we will have no visibility of the decision and how they make the decision 
the the final outcome of course will be will be uh, public but we will not have any visibility on how they reach this conclusion and how they distributed uh, resources this is very important for me. Please remember at time of publications to acknowledge uh, using CSES infrastructure. And this is also, uh, we uh, in this uh, uh, link that I provided here, we are also giving you sentences that you can use, standard sentences that you can use if you don't want to think about how you want to acknowledge the usage of the resources. And this is very important because if you do that in your uh, publications, when you have uh, results that you are excited about and would like to share with a wider audience, please do contact us because our scientific editor, Ms. Simone Ullman, will be happy then to get in touch with you and write an article on your achievement at CSES. So this is why I always like to stress the acknowledgement and the uh, the. Uh, the, the outreach and the fact that you can actually contact us. Now, the general remarks are really some guidelines on uh, this is a more the standard uh, things that I have done also in the, par in the past. So giving you some uh, recommendations on how you should write the, uh, your proposal. So what is an excellent proposal from a, uh, our perspective and also from the panel perspective? where you have a really very good science, okay, I use outstanding, but very good science, that the, and your resources are justified and they are connected to this science that you want to do. You have a clear presentation of your benchmark and the resource request. Benchmarks are not random benchmarks, but they are benchmarks of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the, uh, the science that you want to do and the resource requests are con are related to these uh, to these benchmarks so the the <clears throat> the two things are going together how you do not Pass technical review, which is usually a way either not to start at the at day one if your if your allocation if your uh, science has been uh, considered as also still very good because you will still need to fix your technical uh, uh, report. You have to uh, when you have you are so unclear about the justification of resources because you just say, okay, I want this much compute time and this much disk space. And there are no data supporting your request. So you can, we have to be able to reproduce your request by the numbers, the benchmarks and the, the, uh, the uh, technical data that you are giving us. So please make sure that you do the work. If you need help preparing your proposal for the technical report, contact us. CSES staff has always been available to help you. What we cannot do is if you contact us the week before the deadline asking for help, and that I, it cannot guarantee that we can actually help you at that point. What we want to see is that even we do know that sometimes it's not really uh, possible to have a, a real well-defined request of resources that you know is this and this uh, will not change. We do accept back of the envelope estimates if they are still supported by data that you have uh, provided. What is also very important, and this is actually a, a complaint that I have seen enough time in all panels, not only at CSES, but also in uh, Europe, and not only, uh, not only by the panels, but also by the reviewers. When you say that you need to do to run uh, X models or that you need to do uh, X runs, this cannot be a random number that you put there just so that the final request is uh, justified. You need to explain why you need that number of runs so that why you with that number of runs you will achieve your goal. So please be more scientific in this. 
So what we do not want to see, as I already said, this is just to summarize, is a problem that is very vaguely described and you have no technical data supporting the technical reviewers at CSES cannot reproduce your numbers. You also are aware if you have submitted proposal in the past that you are contacted sometimes during the reviewing process by our technical people so that you can help them clarify your uh, proposals. So one important message here is that on ALPS, all applicants will have to start with a preparatory access. This is a new machine. This is great software is a new uh, system as a new infrastructure. So you will have to go on the system and uh, prepare yourself. As for the storage, this uh, storage is becoming more and more important for everybody. And I understand that the amount of resources are much bigger. So you also produce uh, compute resources. I mean, so you also produce much more data. You need to justify the data request because CSES has not an unlimited storage. It's big, but it's not unlimited. And so you will have to uh, make an effort to justify and explain why you need the resources. And also please remember that your storage, after your project has expired, has finished, you only have three months to move your data and then the data will no longer be accessible and we actually delete them. On the Alps infrastructure, the storage concept might change and probably will change, but we will give you a heads up well in advance so that you know how to uh, proceed with that. Deadline for submissions, and I'm almost uh, done with my presentation. So I this is also on our webpage. I always want to stress out that you were, you have always four that the four next uh, coming deadlines uh, there. So you can prepare, you can plan for when you want to submit your proposal and actually contact us if uh, needed. Summarizing, so. We will have exceptionally two Kronos calls for proposal this year. The first one will be only on the Swiss share of LumiG. Dined will no longer be available. The second Kronos call will be on Alps and LumiG. For the next national call for proposal, Pitts Dined hybrid fully available, Pitts Dined multi core no longer there, we will ask you to submit on LUMIC or on Iger on Alps, and we will allocate the resources. We will also inform you for sure before the next deadline of a submission of proposal, what will be the allocation schemes for the multi-core uh, access at CSES. This 2023, you will only be able to submit a one year project. Please cope with us because this is due to this transition from Pittsdine to, uh, to Alps, and we want to start afresh. So, one year proposal only will be granted, and then there will be no, uh, then you will have to submit a follow up or a new proposal. Last slides for me. User Lab Day will be on Monday, September 4th, 2023. This will be an important User Lab Day because probably there we will already start giving you the proper, the appropriate information, uh, relevant information for the Alps infrastructure. And then if you are interested in June, on June 26, 28, in Davos, we will have our PASC conference. And with this, I will uh, thank you for your attention.